I have a McWill Game Boy Color. What do I mean by McWill? Well, I have installed the McWill kit that replaces the original screen. This modernizes the Game Boy Color and makes the picture look actually decent and playable in the dark. But not only that, is I've installed the McWill USB charging kits, which this basically means that the Game Boy Color, instead of running off of two AA batteries, runs off a single lithium ion battery. So I can show you that now. It's the 14500 size, and I did do a video on this, which you can watch in the top right. But there is one small issue with this kit. As you can see, there is no indicator for when this is charging or done charging. And in this video, I'm gonna fix that. Yeah. So these are the bits I am going to use, and I'll get a close up for you now. I have some pink LEDs, some red LEDs, a 0603 to 0402 adapter board, a double-sided adhesive, and a 220R resistor. So what I was thinking is replacing the original power LED, as you can see when you turn it on, it goes red. It doesn't really have that much use. I wanna replace that with the charge indicator, but I also wanna keep the original power LED just to make it look authentic. So let's try and do that now. Let's remove all the screws from the case and open up the Game Boy Color. And not forgetting to remove the battery cover. So for opening this, I have to be slightly careful and open it like a book. This is due to the McWheel USB charging kit. So as you can see, there is a wire attaching both parts together. And I don't fancy desoldering this because I just want to work on the area up here. So let's see if I can work on this without actually removing that kit. That would be nice. So let's get to the original LED. One screw removed, two screws removed, and three screws removed. So this is the original LED and this is the thing I will be removing. So first before we do that, let's build up the other board. So to start building up the other board, which is going to house all the LEDs, I actually need three of these pads, so let's cut this to size. There we go, nicely cut. I may or may not have cut it at an angle, so let's just trim this. That's looking a bit better, but I think I can make this even better. I'm gonna file this off camera now. Now that's been filed, it is looking very straight and we can move on to the next step. So I'm going to insert a bit of wire here. This is actually a leg from a component and it'll slot in nicely. So what this does is this connects this bottom pad here to this top pad. So let's get this soldered in place. To do that, I'm going to bend the legs and then solder it. Now that it's been soldered in, I'm going to prepare the bottom pads for a 220R resistor. This just makes it so much easier to solder. So this is actually really, really small. I'm not sure if you're able to tell, but I'm going to solder it on nonetheless. And there we go, both sides done. Now I'm going to prepare the other pads for the LEDs. Just doing this makes it a lot easier to put the components on, especially considering how small they are. So this is the purpley pink LED. I think it looks more purple and I'm going to put it on the middle. And that way the circuit will be complete like so with a 220R resistor protecting it. I do have some tweezers that will test the LED so we know which orientation to fit it on. Now I'm going to put the LED on, making sure not to burn it. That's one side done. And now just to solder the other side. There we go. To check that this works, I can then use my same little test tweezers. And if I test at each test point, there we go. Oh, oops, <laughs> I didn't mean to flick that. Let's, uh, let's carry on and put on the red LED. So I'm not gonna use the original red LED. It'll be way too big. I'm gonna use this tiny one here. So this is the kind of color you would expect. Let's get this on onto the top pads of this little board. So that's one side done. Now let's just solder the second side. There we go. Again, let's use our test tweezers just to make sure it's on the right way and it works. Hey, there we go. Look at that. 
These will be our colors, and you, as you can see, you have the original power LED and the new charging one. Moving on to the Game Boy Color itself. Now that it's out, let's take out the original red LED. I'm just going to apply heat and pull. Now that's out, I can keep that for any future repairs. There is an orientation for this LED, with this one being the positive and this one being the negative. So I was thinking of putting the board over here because that's where the original LED was but it does seem to be there's a pin in the way from this link connector even when I put it this way so I think I'm going to have to cut that off to make room for my little board. Now that's cut off, it fits nicely and this is exactly where I want it. So the last thing we need to do is I've cut some wire to length so let's tin the tips of this to make it solderable and attach it to this board. And the last one now. Quite a few wires there, so I'm going to attach the long wires to this pin here, which is our charging LED, and attach the second one. Come on, there we go. And then I'm going to attach the small ones to the original LED. This is because the original LED, the places I'm going to connect the wires to, are very close. So that is the finished product for this little mod. So I'm going to now attach the two short wires to the original LED location. And just to make sure it works, there's luckily some test points for us so I can use my test tweezers just to make sure I've got this connected right. And there we go, it does, working perfectly. So let's move on to connecting the purple LED. I've quickly stuck this board on and made sure the wires don't cover the hole with that adhesive that I was talking about earlier. It's a foam, it's about one millimeter thick. So now let's connect up the charging LED to the McWill kit. So let's flip over to the other side so we can solder them on. Now we're on the other side, I'm gonna solder these connections to the McWill charge kit. So we are after pin 7 and pin 4 of the IC. So I'm going to prepare both these pins with some solder before I then try attaching the wires. This should just make it easier to attach the wires on. I am attaching the positive to pin 4, which is connected directly to the LED. So now I am attaching the negative to pin 7, which this is our 220R resistor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to clean this up off camera. I think there might be some issues with which hole I've used on the Game Boy Color. As you can see, I've desoldered it and not put it through that hole anymore because there's going to be a pillar and screw there and use some vials on the board instead. And I've had to tidy up the rear to make sure to avoid the extra holes again for the pillars. And I've had to make sure to avoid the rubber pad. Now that that's done, let's put this back in its case. So bring on the montage. So the moment of truth, let's test this and see if it works. I'm kind of excited. I hope this, this is going to be okay. No, I don't see the LED. Does the purple one work though? Hey, that one does. I don't know why they said it was pink. It looks more purple to me. Let me know in the comments below what color you think it is. Uh, I, I can, funny enough, I can at an angle see the LEDs there. So what I'm going to do is open this up and I will cut to what I can find. So I think the issue is there's actually a ring on the case and I've cut it at the side because the red LED was right up to the side. So hopefully that should let in more light. But not only that, I need some kind of light diffuser and I don't have anything because I wasn't expecting to run across this issue. But I found these little rubber feet that you stick on the underside of things and that seems to work quite well. So I've cut one up to fit inside and this should hopefully do its job. I'm going to skip the reassembly stage since you've just seen a montage. Let's get right back to testing. Hey, okay, it's it's a bit dim, but I like it. It doesn't look that good on camera, I must admit. But if I turn off my uh, ring light, hopefully it will look a lot better and you can see it is actually working. There we go. And this is what the red and purple one looks at the same time. So the pink slash purple one is very bright in comparison to the red one but I, I'm happy with this. This is what it looks like in the dark and this is just the purple LED with no red light. It, it 
looks pretty much the same as <laughs> having the red light on. To me, this has solved an issue because now I know when that battery is charging and when it is charged, it will turn off. Now I won't risk ever overcharging, even though there is overcharge protection in the McWheel, but it's just nice to know that when I plug it in, it's doing something.